Let, like, listen, <laughs> you're an entire system, okay? Your mind also connects to your heart, your heart to your mind, and then there's the spiritual side as well. So I usually use the spiritual psychology and also human design to help you understand how to navigate life in a more successful, prosperous way. So welcome, greetings. Yeah, today is going to be deep, really, really deep, okay? It's going to change your life. This is the session that everybody in the world literally, literally needs to sit with. You're going to need to grab a pen and a piece of paper. You're going to go deeper. I have my show notes today. Usually I um, upload it to my school when the session is done. Towingyoumessery.academy. So greetings. I see the wise tiger here on Clubhouse. We have Instagram running, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What else? Am I LinkedIn? <laughs> Why would I forget LinkedIn? <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. So let's get started. Just a quick recap, because if you're just joining this series, you've missed a lot. Let me just give you some background that will help you understand what I'm going to cover today. Number one, your mind is your information processing system. Let that sink in. Okay, you have the digestive system, you have the respiratory system, you have this system, this system, there are lots of system, right? What is yet to be fully studied, okay? And this is why this session is extremely powerful, extremely important, is that you have a system that, that handles metaphysical side of you, non-physical. This is where the spiritual and the physical side of you collide. Your thoughts, nobody can touch your thoughts, but they are real. They are roaming through your system. Okay? Your mind is real, even though nobody can touch it. You emit energy, even though you cannot see it with your naked eye. But now there are scientific systems that can measure the human, when you say human aura, the emit, what you are emitting. What you carry inside you, you emit, and it's also part of manifestation. Okay? So think of your mind as your information processing system. How you take in information, how you process it, and you generate an output. The first place you are going to experience the output of your mind is your body. This is what creates emotions and feelings. Sensations in your body is a reflection of the thoughts you are processing within you. It's the dashboard information dash dashboard because without emotion without feelings you will not know what's going on you will not know what's going on within you and so there's a signal okay it's a signal to tell you what you're about to manufacture <laughs> so i'm going to go deeper into it but again grab your pen grab your piece of paper welcome to the space i'm towing you must call me coach towing founder and ceo of nazaru the author of mindset of an entrepreneur tv host of the quantum leap program. Also, I teach international trade and entrepreneurship development and self-actualization, like the most advanced stuff, right? The most advanced stuff in the world. <laughs> okay. So part of this program is really to support those who want to pursue unlimited, unlimited success. You want to become unstoppable, but trust me, if you don't manage your emotions, your emotions will stop you. So think of your mind, the metaphysical side of you. Okay that listens to your thoughts and generates emotions, feelings, sensations in your body as a signal. And part of the journey is that your body is going to do at work. Your body takes action. But the instruction on what action your body should take comes from your mind. Okay? So if you want to stand up, if you want to sit down, mobility, human mobility. Again, this is part of the human design. There's a whole series of classes that you need to tap into at towingyoumessery.academy. If you want to go deeper, if you want to develop the skills, towingyoumessery.academy. My first name, my last name, .academy. Just type that into the browser and it will take you right there. The human design, okay? So your body is going to take action, but your body doesn't just take action by itself, right? A body has to be put in motion. And part of the instruction on what action to take right, on what to do comes from the output of the mind. And the emotions that you carry is a preparation. It releases energy to the body so that the body can take action, right? 
Without that energy, the body will just sit down. So energy has to be released, but thoughts give instruction. It directs your energy. It tells your energy what it should do and where it should go. Negative thoughts polarizes your energy negatively and you're about to take negative action because that's it. That's the instruction. That's the sensation you're going to feel in you. Anger, right? All of the negative emotions. You're, when you take action based on those emotions, they will be negative. Positive emotions as well will release, right? Energy to do work. And when you release energy to do work, when you're happy, when you're fulfilled, when you're enlightened, your work, your productivity, what you produce will be beautiful, will be nice, will be positive. But where this gets quite dynamic is when energy gets trapped in the body. But I'll go deeper into it. So I'm just laying the foundation. Okay, good. I know it's early in the morning. Greetings, greetings. I'm going to go deeper, but I'm laying the foundation. We've already gone a little bit deeper, but I'm going to connect everything as we finalize and finish. So stay with me. This is life changing. Okay, so I started with your mind is your information processing system. Input, process, output. Part of the output, okay, of the mind, right, is the instruction it gives your nervous system, central nervous system, on what chemicals and reaction to produce in your body. Your nerves produce, right, syn you know, synapses, all of those things. They produce specific hormones, and those hormones carry so much energy. And that's why you're about to jump out of your seat if you're angry. <laughs> That's why you're about to do something. Yeah? You're about to do something. Same is positive energy, positive, positive emotion. When you are happy, when you are fulfilled, when you are in your zone, when you are in your flow, when you are motivated, when you are inspired, you will create. This is the part place of creativity. Positive emotions make us create positive things. But when you are not well in terms of you carry, you embody negative emotions, you feel sad, people feel depressed, people feel nauseated, all kinds of stuff because the energy within your body, right, is one that is trapped. It's It kind of puts a stop to the system. Okay. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Pull, tell your friends to pull up. This is the session that changes everybody's life. Literally. Okay. So the mind is your information processing system. Input, process, output. So let's go through input. Where does the mind take input from? Several spaces. Okay? Your mind takes input from different spaces. So, for example, your five senses, the physical five senses. You know, there's a sixth sense, but let's, let's still keep going. Your five senses, taste, touch, right? Smell, sight, sound, what you hear. They are gathering information as you experience this reality. When you watch TV, when you touch something, okay, is that everything you, every of those senses, they have nerves that take in information, sound, sound waves, and each of those right senses, they capture different types of experiences, sights, what you see, video, right? It sees, it sees things through a certain perspective, it takes it in. Sound, your ears listen to sound, they take it in. Taste, you eat food. Smell, right, the sense of smell, touch, feel. All of those things, they are input into your mind. They take it all in and then your mind has to process it. So that's one input space, okay? Another input space is actually your internal organs, right? Breathing, all of the things happening in you, inside you, when to digest food, when you eat food, what to do, how to breathe. There are automatic systems already programmed in your body. So when you eat food, there has to be information sent to the organs. Oh, it's time to digest this food. When you are sleeping, it's time to sleep. It's time to process certain information. So the mind also processes certain information different times in the day, depending on whatever you are doing and what is happening within you. What you are doing externally, influences what is happening inside you. Your blood flow, white blood cells, right? DNA, all of this information 
that is put, that is your makeup, your design, your human design. Okay? The central nervous system is, is sending information up and down everywhere. Okay? Up and down. Organs talk to, right? You talk, organs talk to your mind every day. If you look at the mapping of the brain, right? There are different mappings mapped to different parts of your body. But informations are going in and out. Think of it as the software of the human body. There's the hardware and there's the software. Okay? What gives instruction on what should be stored in the software and how to use information and how to direct energy, what you're about to do, the actions you're about to take. Okay, I see comments coming in. Greetings, yes. Okay, let's see. Thank you, Faith, uh, for the comments. Um, yeah, you can use the space on chat as well on Clubhouse. And those on LinkedIn, you can also type if you have any questions or reactions. So, again, this is change, life changing. Everybody needs to sit down and watch this, you know, spend time and grab your pen. Okay, so just as the physical system, right, like the digestive system, the respiratory system, the mind also takes information, processes it, and generates output in the form of emotions, feelings, and these are instructions. They are signals and instructions to the body on what the body is going to do. Okay? So your behavior, your actions, the way, right, is influenced by the way you think and the person you've become, your belief system, your identity, what you consider to be important to you, what you want out of life, the vision you have, on and on and on. Your mind uses all of that data. So when it takes information in, it can take it from external, right, external condition, what you're seeing, the physical side, right? Whatever you see, you look at your bank account, you, you're, you know, when you're working with other people. Um, in the EQ series, I talk about the human to human interface. Okay. So you can also interface with other people as we're communicating right now, right? As I'm sharing with you, okay, there's one to many. I'm speaking to many people. So there's an interface. The only way you can understand me is that your mind can comprehend what it is I'm saying. We're speaking the same language. If you're not speaking the same language, there's no interpreter <laughs> on your side, then we cannot communicate. So information can come from what other people are, are saying to you, communicating with you, what you're observing, what you're experiencing. Okay, it can also come from what, what's going on within you, the organs of your body. It can also come from the metaphysical side of you, the self. Yesterday, I explained the self. You are not your mind, but your mind belongs to the self. The self is the decision maker in the whole scheme of your life. That's at the soul level, at the heart level. And that self is connected to the spiritual side of you. So the mind can also take instruction from you. You can tell your mind what you want to eat, what you want it to produce. This is the power of manifestation. You have the power to give instruction to your mind. Now, many people are not using that power. When you are not empowered, you feel disempowered, and you let your mind run the system. You think your mind is you. You don't know. You've not separated the self, you, from your mind, and you're not in charge of your mind. When you let your mind, when you lose control, right? Or when you've not gained control over your mind, over your system, over your life, many people get trapped in realities that is not to their liking. Why is that the case? You see, the journey of self-actualization, the journey of spiritual awakening is one everybody needs to go through. You know why? Everybody came into this life, right, as a child without the self-empowerment right? A baby is not empowered to make decisions. A baby is not empowered to drive this car. It's like you, 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 you may be given a car, but if you don't grow up, if you don't mature, you cannot drive. So many times what I've experienced, and this is why I'm teaching this by the way publicly, is that when you don't emotionally grow, your, your energy is being mismanaged. It's like a child that is throwing tantrum that is not controlling the outputs of your life. There's input, process, output. You're just suddenly seeing yourself triggered. You're doing anything. 
and you're, you're, you're manifesting the reality you're, that, that is not pleasant, that is not pleasing to you. The reason is because when people are children, external factors program that mind. Other people told you who to be, how the mind to function was programmed by society, by education system, by your parents, by nurturing, by everything you agreed to, everything you accepted, everything you didn't reject, everything you didn't say no to, because the empowered self will resist. The empowered self is supposed to push back at negativity. But what's happening today is people have formed identity based on external conditioning, external programming that is not to your liking. The self is not happy. <laughs> the self is not happy. So it doubts, it fears, it feels limited, it feels stuck. You found yourself in a condition that you, you felt helpless. You, it just happened to you. You are in a place because you've been sleeping. You've been on autopilot. You've let a programmed mind drive your car and it has taken to you to a destination and you are looking around you and you're saying, how did you get here? Okay? You're saying, how did you get here? How did you get into this relationship? How did you get into this job? You're now looking around you and you're saying, whoa, if you could design your life, you probably do something differently. Now, this is the power. This is the power of EQ self-therapy to rearrange, right? But the self has to be empowered, educated, given the skills to get yourself from where you are to where you want to be. Without these skills, the self is still muted. It's still silence. It's still being disempowered. Because if the self is not bigger and stronger than the mind, if the mind grew faster than you grew emotionally, the mind will rule, your, rule everything. And that's why EQ, emotional intelligence, is the power to make sure, right, you take charge of the use of your energy. I'm going to go deeper into that concept. Okay? Emotional development, emotional maturity will help you take your power back, take your energy back, be more responsible and be more directional on what you are manifesting in your life. Because if you don't do this work that I'm talking about, the mind, the programmed mind that has been programmed by society, education system, just by default, everything it has watched, the movies you've watched, all the information it has gathered up till now is what it is using to manifest today's reality. So if you want a different future that is different from your past, different from past programming, the self has to rise up and now reprogram the mind. You have to reprogram. You have to redirect your GPS. You have to give your mind something new. You have to direct it to give you something new. And you have to monitor it. <laughs> you have to be, you have to, um, like, make it account. You have to train it. An untrained mind is reckless. It just uses your energy anyway. And the worst side is when it uses your own energy to self-sabotage, to destroy your own life. I'll talk about it because negative emotions, okay, they are supposed to be the waste byproducts of the information system. You know, digestive system, you eat food, not everything you eat is good for your body. The digestive system knows that, but it goes through a process of digesting food and then separating what's nutrients will give you energy to move forward, to power your body, and it knows what is waste. It crushes it and sends it out. What's going on is if you don't have emotional intelligence skills, you are eating all the information and some of it is doing damage and you've not developed the skills of letting go of negative stuff. So people have built identity on negativity. People are angry, people are afraid, people are doubting. These are emotions that was never, never supposed to be yours. You were never supposed to hold on to negativity. You were supposed to let it go. And the Bible talks about forgiveness, right? Gratitude. All of those things is to release trapped energy, negative energy in your system. You're not, you're supposed to be accepting what's good and rejecting what's bad from your information system. But when everybody eats everything, accepts it as part of life, and you don't have the control to filter through things and let people go because everything you attach your energy to, is stealing your energy because your thoughts 
they give instruction on where your energy should go. So if you're angry, listen, your energy has been trapped to create a reality that is unpleasant in your body and whoever you're angry to. I said a lot. <laughs> That's why I said, grab your pen. This is the session you want to listen to several times. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going. Your emotions and feelings are signals of what's going on in your mind. You see, when you're driving a car, okay, you see there's a dashboard that tells you foil gauge, <laughs> how fast you're going. <laughs> there are rules. Life has rules, right? Just as the road has, you know, driving has rules. When you go here, watch your speed. When you go here, you can accelerate on the highway. When you see a stop sign, stop. Go stop, right? Green light, go, right? There are instructions. The dashboard also says it shows you what's going on beneath the system of your car. Feelings are the same. They're similar. What's going on within you? Okay? In today's world, our mind is being exposed to so much more information than is typical. And it's also being overwhelmed with the volume of information it, it now has to process. So let's imagine that somebody didn't tell you you're supposed to eat food three times a day. What if you keep eating food every minute, every hour, every second, every, every moment, you just keep eating just because food is available, just because content is available. You're just eating, 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 eating for four hours straight on. <laughs> imagine if you were just eating real food without taking a pause without allowing the system to process it to extract good stuff the good meaning delete the stuff that is not good send it out of the system and then take the good ones into yourselves and empower your life imagine if you did not have the knowledge of brushing your teeth okay of cleaning out the entry point of ingesting food Imagine if you don't shower your body. <laughs> Imagine nobody taught you how to clean up. Nobody taught you how to brush your teeth. Nobody taught you how to pace yourself in terms of what you're eating. Imagine if you're just reckless. You're eating anything, not cleaning your teeth, not showering. It stinks. This is what's going on emotionally and mentally today. People have eaten so much. They've exposed themselves to toxicity, all kinds of behaviors harms like listen you've gone through life and you're carrying the memories of all of the life you've experienced they are within you listen if you don't check again what you're carrying if you don't look again inside your database your mind is still using all of that information to create the experience today it's time to clean up yeah it's time to brush our teeth <laughs> it's time to clean up it's time for the self to be educated about the mind. You see, you, you have information about your teeth. From being a child, people knew it was easy to detect physical smell. Your parents would teach you, listen, we don't want cavities. Because trust me, if you eat recklessly, you take too much sugar, it's just a matter of time. The teeth would decay. And if you don't take care of it for too long, now you need to see a dentist. But daily self-care, right? Daily discipline. Shower, comb your hair, look good, smell good. The daily self-care, we were taught on how to care for physical. Sleep well, eat well, do all those things, right? You were taught how to discipline yourself, how to even eat the food that you need to eat. What we were in taught is the discipline of the mind. What are you ingesting? What are you exposing your mind to? Right? Because self-therapy now is how you're going to clean up. It's the skill for daily mind care. But there are situations you have to seek clinical help. Trauma. Serial, right? But what I teach, which is extremely powerful, will help you discipline your mind because as you're driving through life, 
listen, you need the skill. Somebody taught you how to drive your car, but somebody didn't teach you how to manage your energy. And I'm going to talk more about energy management because emotion is energy in motion. Your energy, right, is being directed. When it's being directed in a direction, it's going in a direction that will do damage to you and other people. You, the self, you're supposed to pull yourself back. And if somebody brings crap to you, you're also supposed to have the skill of letting go, of deleting what was introduced into your system that is unpleasant. Instead of holding on to anger, if somebody knocks on your house and brings crap into your house and leaves it and walks away, many people will still like, oh, this person is this, this person. No, 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 no. Leave the person. They've moved on. Your job is to clean your house. <laughs> people forget if a tap is running. Instead of just mopping, first of all, close the door. Close what created that toxicity. This is the power of boundaries. Close it and then clean your house. Waiting for that person to come and clean your house is not wise. <laughs> Gain the skills on how to clean your house. No matter who did what, when, because you have those memories, they flash. The skill of self-therapy is to clean house. You cannot say, oh, this, it was this food I had that gave me, right? Just brush your teeth. Just wake up and brush your teeth. Brush it in the morning, brush it in the night. Bible talks about the word of God. Use it in the morning, use it in the night. You need it. Don't just be ruminating on what happened yesterday. Just gain the skill to clean up. Just be cleaning up. <laughs> clean up. Okay. There's a lot. Okay? There's a lot to what I'm teaching. And I'm speaking very fast because there's so much to share. Okay. In my school, there's a seven class series on emotional intelligence, the human design, tons of PowerPoint. I go deeper into the technical side of this. Today, I'm creating awareness. I'm creating awareness because we are living at a time where there's so much more irresponsibility in terms of the volume of consumption. People think massive amounts of content consumption will give them a good life. Trust me. People are more depressed, confused today than ever before because the human mind was not designed to be consuming this volume and digesting it. You're not giving yourself room to process the things you are consuming. And also, people are not consuming rich stuff, things that will create wellness in you. Listen, anytime you touch anything, you expose yourself to any thoughts, any person, any place, anything, and you are not well. You walk away and something oh, you have just ingested a thought that is about to damage something inside you. You're supposed to be more sensitive, more aware, more intelligent that when you walk away from a person, a place, a conversation, and you go yucky, that's not normal. It's not normal. It's an indication. In fact, in one of the classes, in the class, I talk about setting your thermostat. Okay? The self has to do a lot of work. Okay, because you can no longer be irresponsible. I talk about setting your thermostat, your ability to define what well-being looks like and feels like. Many people don't know what peace looks like in their body anymore because they've not felt at peace for a long time. In fact, one, one of my, um, should I say, contacts said one moment she felt peace after doing some of my classes, she said, and she was now check, checking in with herself like, why do I feel this calm and peaceful and undisturbed? It was not, it was a feeling. Peace was a foreign language. Why? Because when your energy is divided, some people think that is success. When you are scattered all over, you are feeling busy. <laughs> no, that's not. You can't create anything because your energy is divided into the amount of thoughts going through your system. Because thoughts hijack energy and they give your energy, right? What to do, where to go. Okay. If you say, what are you eating for dinner? If it's the moment you say spaghetti, it means energy is going to go there to create spaghetti. The power of manifestation. You are manifesting your thoughts, good or bad. Okay. So today we are consuming too much. And so we need this skill more than ever. Now you could get away with this not having this skill 20 years ago okay when you when when life was simple <laughs> when life was simple 
no internet, nobody bugging you. The phone in your hand is just key. In fact, before technology, before we were all connected through the web, 20, 30 years ago, you could get away. In fact, people had more joy because they were really living real life with real people. Simplicity. Simple life is more LD than what we're doing today. But you're not going to change it. You know why? We are being dragged. The whole head and galaxy is moving. The solar system, everything is moving through space at a faster rate than you know. We are being dragged collectively into the future of the world that is more fast space. What does it mean? It means your mind now has to keep up. Your mind is struggling. Many people, this is the skill we need. We now need to be disciplined. When you know this information, your well-being, when your well-being, if you prioritize your well-being, you cannot be doing the things you are doing today because you have to know the consequences of exposing your mind to overwhelm. Now you have to choose wisely what you're doing, where you're going, if you want a peaceful, loving, happy life. Those things no longer come by default anymore. You see, life before in your community, in your village, in right? I'm here in Chicago. Life before was simple. You knew your friends. You had friends who called you, who was always, they were happy, you were happy. You were always laughing. Relationship was pleasurable. You would go out for a date. This, 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 right? Life was simple. Everybody was happy and dishing happiness. But here is the deal. The anxiety has risen. Everybody is being programmed to be like anxious. You feel like you are missing out on life. So dating is on a hap. Everything is on a hap. And you have to scroll here, scroll here, scroll up, scroll down. That stuff, your mind is, the, is now responsible for processing and making a decision on your own behavior. And those things are layered with hormones, pleasure hormones. So they are now kind of like a drug. We are pleasure seekers. The mind loves to be given particular doses of those things. But those actions that you're taking, those behaviors, they may or may not be to your own benefit. The things you're doing, this is what I, when I talk about self-sabotage, is that the mind could be drawn into doing things and taking actions that does more damage. Because when you are not running and leading your life and your mind, when you are not controlling your mind and your energy, when you control your mind, you control your energy as well. Okay. If you don't do that work, then you sit on, I mean, pleasure would rule the mind, not destiny, not purpose, not for, right. It will focus on anything it wants. And so what you want, you are being denied of what you want because the mind you need to use to create the life you want is busy creating the life you don't want. Okay, let's keep going. If anyone has any comments or wants to engage, feel free to raise your hand. And if you want to join the conversation, you can contribute to your experience. Or if there's anything I'm sharing today, you can also type what's resonating with you or any reaction or even questions. I would love to respond to that as well. Okay, so what does this mean? Everything I just shared, what does it mean to you and I? It means the self must develop new skills to be able to preserve the overall well-being of your mind, your information processing system, because it's now being exposed and being bombarded. You are consuming massive amounts of information and the mind has to do more work. And more people are racing through life to where I don't know, to do what I don't know. And the mind often needs to ask you questions. And part of this process is slowing down. The mind needs you to slow down because if you're moving too fast, you're overwhelming your mind. There are times you now have to develop new disciplines to slow down because your mind, part of the process of the mind is it also will be asking you, okay, how do I undo this experience? Now, if you don't give room to your mind, if you don't spend more time with your mind, if your heart is not talking more to your mind, typically what happens is your mind will always use old information for new realities. If anything it confronts, looks like what it has dealt with before, it will just pull from your data bank and just repeat patterns. So this is what also happens to trauma being repeated. You're attracted to the same things, the same types of people, no matter what you try, 
because your mind is still carrying around all the information you gave it about who you were. Excuse me, right? So all of the information of the past that you were okay with, how you programmed the mind in the past, everything that you accepted in the past, the mind will keep giving it to you because you accepted it. So if you accepted a certain relationship in the past, you didn't complain, you didn't fight back, you didn't talk to your mind, you didn't reprogram yourself, guess what the mind is still looking for? That. <laughs> right? It manifests everything within itself that you are okay with. Acceptance. I always say, listen, people who complain is still complacency because when you stop complaining, you start taking action and you start dealing with this thing. So there's a new skill. Everybody now needs to develop this. It's a must. Now it's no longer, um, oh, emotional intelligence, nice to have. Now people teach it differently. The way I teach it, it's more robust, deeper. There's science to it. It's, it's, it's a life-changing program, the way I design it. Okay? I have a first degree. The funny thing is that, okay, so I have a first degree in mathematics. Okay? Second degree information system. You see where I'm coming from? So... Not everybody, like my training allows me to deal with complexity, right? Data. I served as a strategist for Fortune 1, right? Walmart, headquarters, running multi, the most complex projects in the world, supply chain, right? So specific people have gone through specific training, people in statistics, economics, mathematics. They have... Not every one of us, but very few people are trained for their mind, their system to take in those in the research, the research world. We are trained to take in tons of information, synthesize it, find trend, find meaning, digest it into simple Simple form that an average person, everyday person, can understand. Okay? So all through my, I mean, this is just something I sat with and I realized, wait a minute, the way I'm wired, the things I've done, the things I undo, is that, you know, and this is why I teach this class, is that an average person is not trained to process massive amounts of unrelated information and be able to digest it, synthesize it, and extract the richest part of it, which is what I say the digestive system does. You eat everything, you are enjoying your food, you know, bone, everything you are eating, you are eating. The system still has to do the work of synthesizing it. So no matter what books you're reading, no matter what content you're consuming, no matter what you're ingesting to your mind, trust me, that's raw data. Your mind still has to make sense still has to extract meaning from everything you're consuming. It still has to file it and store it. And it has to know what, it, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and what to trash. That's why, if I ask you right now, the last 24 hours, can you recount everything you exposed your mind to? What do you remember around the last 24 hours? The mind doesn't keep every information you expose it to. It doesn't right? Your mind only keeps what it believes is important. And what you believe is important is based on programming. So the mind always lets go of things that is of no use. It, ha it has to, it has to. But here's the kicker. If you've built an identity that is angry, that is unforgiven, that is this, that your mind believes that that is important to you. So it's, it will always show you things that make you pissed off, make you complain. This is also the negative pattern. That's why I said you now have to do this work to learn how to detoxify. Okay? Because it will manifest. If you keep keeping writing your database, stories of this, 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 your mind will be searching for all the stories, making it true over and over again. Every day will look like yesterday. Tomorrow looks like today, right? People, just check in with yourself. If you are not on this journey of growth, if you are not in my school, if you are not taking these classes, if you are not listening to a message like this, if you are not being challenged, right, to ascend, to do things better, trust me, every day looks like it's the same. Nothing, right? Gen you can go through a whole year, January, December. December looks like January. January, the next January looks like December. 
people move through life and they repeat the same pattern. You wake up, you eat, eat the same food. You go to the same places, right? Your mind loves that constant until you, the self, rises to disrupt that. Until you tell it, we want to do something new. Okay. The mind. Okay, let's see. There's a comment. Hi, okay, Chuku. Good. Thank you. Just listening. I appreciate the insights and reflection. Yes, yes, yes. Feel free to come up. Um, now, usually, <laughs> let me say this. When, if people come up or ask questions, I will take a moment to go deeper with that person. So that's the benefit of having me here. Because one-on-one, -on -one, we deal with that stuff in one-on-one -on -one coaching. However, if you have a burning question within you today as I'm speaking publicly, take advantage of this moment. Ask it. Feel free to come up. I will happily, I enjoy this, by the way. In fact, if I need to break it into multiple parts, one, part two, because of it, I will do that. Because for me, serving the need of one person, if I can offer you a personalized insight, because right now I'm giving you a broad view. That's why I say in my school, you will personalize, you do your inner work. People who are out there, you keep consuming content. Content buries this work. Any person that is not challenging you to listen to your own voice, to map your own life, to do your own inner work, trust me, they are just compounding the matter. It gets worse, not better, if you don't take care of your inner realities. It's like burying fear, doubt, limitation under content instead of exposing you're supposed to find the viruses you're supposed to detect the thoughts that is sabotaging that is not letting you move forward you're supposed to be in search it's a needle in a haste you're supposed to be like doing tell me what listen you're supposed to be expressing looking through your life story you're supposed to be asking what do i believe why am i doing this why am i repeating you're supposed to be applying self-therapy like listening to your heart self-parenting that there are many skills there are many tools i teach you in my school that you now have to use and why is this important the reason is because anything that has hijacked your energy when it's time to create your business you now want a new life you want to follow your dreams you don't have energy to do what you want to do because the energy is trapped in emotion negative emotion so for every thoughts you tackle you will find yourself feel better i'm telling you anytime anybody comes into my space you listen to this an hour or so <laughs> you will leave this session feeling more powerful empowered because by thinking through all these things i'm sharing with you your mind is processing everything i'm sharing and what i'm sharing is clearing the cobwebs is offering you clarity the power of clarity is that your energy will be released from confusion. Okay? Confusion steals energy. Clarity releases energy. So the moment I can give, right, this type of coaching session, even though it's a group one, who I'm publicly offering this free, right, is that the moment you your mind can be cleared, remember, you are now focused. Anybody here now? You are paying attention to what I'm sharing because this is what you're exposing your mind to. And you're exposing your mind to something that is offering the mind clarity. The mind will be happy. The mind will be relieved. You know why? Because it is decongesting the mind. Clarity is decongesting the overwhelm, the mental overwhelm. But if you were consuming content you don't understand, Nobody is teaching you. Nobody is coaching you. They're just pouring. They're just consuming this newsletter. This, 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 this. You are everywhere. The mind is like, oh boy, what, what do I do with this stuff now? Like, unrelated information. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Like, they don't make sense. They don't add up. When your mind cannot make sense of the things you are feeding it, it's overwhelmed. And it's trying to say, help me. Tell me what's important, what I should store, what I should not store. So this kind of session will help your mind to see, help your mind to understand. This is the power of enlightenment. Enlightenment 
when we say knowledge is power, it's not all knowledge that you should be pursuing. Not all knowledge is good for you. Just like not everything you are eating is going to be held on by your body. Every day <laughs> when you eat, the system will get rid of stuff. So the skill now is what do you need to get rid of that is doing damage, that is not setting you free, that is holding you bound. What are the strongholds? Yes, Bible says strong old. They old is they are holding you where you are. No matter what dreams you have of the future, if you don't have energy to create those dreams, you have to do this work. Okay, so feel free to 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 type any question you feel comfortable putting out here publicly. Feel free to type it, and I'll take a moment. I'll pause. I'll go deeper. If you want to go deeper right because your own context your own reality is different from everybody else's context context that's why one-on-one -on -one coaching is so powerful so important you know why <laughs> i use this analogy if microsoft or macbook or right they created a laptop let's say a mind is created i'm just using that phrase is that and distributed to 500 people five years after the conditions of those computers will not be the same because the context where, they, where each person have gone, what you have eaten, what you have exposed yourself to, what you, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do. It's distinct, unique to you. This is where one-on-one -on -one support comes in. Your own life story, right, is what you're carrying around. And your story is distinct, important to you. So that work is personal. <laughs> That work is personal because your story, your experiences, I go into culture, nature, nurture, who raised you, who spoke to you, what they said to you, who did what, what you believe about what's possible for you, your confidence level, your belief system, your identity, who you are showing up to be based on your belief system. It's unique to you. This is what, what happens, right? This is why we are all different in the world. So that work is personal. One thing important I want you to walk away with, if you know this for life, you are set. Thoughts give direction to your energy. Your thoughts are the instructions you are giving to your system on what you want your energy to do for you. Your thoughts. You see, your... <laughs> You, when it comes to food, there are different kinds of classes of food. Knowledge, educating ourselves tells us carbohydrate, protein. Without that knowledge, you will not know which food will give you what results in your body. We have the knowledge of why we need to drink water, protein, fat, carbohydrate, right? We, we, were, taught, we, we were educated. Imagine if you were not educated. You just see any food. You know? Cake, pancake, everything, sugar, 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 sugar. But we were educated. The same thing is done in the mind. In one of the classes, I talk about the different types of content that will give you different types of relief. I explain it to you so that you are not picking up and eating different types of content that would mess you up. Just as in food, they'll tell you food groups. This food, if you eat more of this food, it will help you grow muscles. If you eat fat and oil, it will help you do this. Your skin will glow if you do this. Egg is good for this. Oil is good for that. Omega-3 is this. The power of knowledge, the power of education in this concept help you choose so that the decisions you are making in terms of what you are ingesting and feeding the people you, are, you, are, you love, right? That knowledge helps you choose better. It helps you make better decisions for your overall well-being. If you ignore that knowledge, right, you don't exercise, you don't eat good food, you don't try organic, there are consequences. And you, you, your body bears those consequences. The same thing is true in the mind. If you don't know the type of knowledge that will inspire you, motivate you, challenge you, teach you, guide you, even correct you, you know, today, people don't like correction. 
They don't like mentorship. They don't like coaching. <laughs> you don't know that part of the process of well-being is to chastise, is to correct your mind. When it does something that is not giving you a good result, you're supposed to reprogram it. Correction is reprogramming. You need to know when you are wrong and when you are right. You know what? You need to know what is a lie and what is the truth. When people don't like corrections, they don't like feedback. Everybody backs off and leaves them alone and they continue to speed on the highway. It's like drunk driving. You're about to damage yourself and damage everybody else. And that's why I say there's an unmentored generation right now that nobody can call out. Nobody can correct. Nobody can challenge. Nobody can even say, take a look at the mirror. Is your behavior, your thoughts, the action you are taking, is it beneficial to your life? So there's another type of content that when you listen to you, it will correct you. That's why Bible talks that the Bible, the scripture was given for correction, for rebuke. <laughs> and people don't think they need any of that right now. <laughs> you are the best thing since sliced bread. You can do anything, say anything. Holy Spirit cannot talk to you. God cannot talk to you. You are like the best reckless behavior. Right? You don't know that there are times you need to drink milk. There are times you should fast. <laughs> you don't know fast. You know, ingestion, they'll tell you fasting will do this for you. Meaning, staying away from food so that your system can recover. That's knowledge. If I tell, listen, my students know this. When I give them assignments, I say, go off social media. Focus. Think. Get your coffee. Get your tea. Whichever one pleasures you. Get your nice chair your favorite chair your favorite blanket get into a cozy place that is comfort that will give you comfort and be drinking your tea and be learning you know spiritual practices meditation there are times you need to fast from content consumption <laughs> there are times you need to stay away from people Isolate yourself. Get close. Give, you, give yourself breathing space. Let your mind recover. You've been exposing it for all this. This, hey, this activity, this activity, this 247. You've forgotten that God said every, every seven days, Sabbath, don't do anything. <laughs> the person who fashioned this mind that gave it to you, he knows that every seven days, you need a refresh. Is this too much? Okay. Let's keep going. Only those who want the truth. Let me keep going, please. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Your thoughts give direction to your energy. It tells your energy where it should go in your body. And it is used to prepare the body to take action. One of the powerful stories in the Bible is when Cain and Abel. Cain had the thoughts roaming in his body. Go and read it again. Because he saw his brother being favored and the sacrifice of his brother being accepted. Cain was steaming. Okay? The thoughts, what, the way he was thinking was already preparing his energy, he was about to do something. He was about to do something. Okay? You, the, more you, the more you meditate and ruminate on negative thoughts, the more energy it builds up. It doesn't get better. If you don't forgive and let go, listen, the more you think about something, they become more real. You are gathering energy. You are gathering energy. You are gathering energy. This is the power of meditation in manifestation. If you use the same power for good, you want to build a business, listen, you will meditate. You will think about your ideas and your idea will be growing. The seed of the idea will be expanding, expanding, expanding. The more you think about who you want to be, right? Energy will be released, 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 released until it, it allows you to take the action. Whether negative or positive, this thing works together the same way. So Cain was building, steaming. He was cooking that thought, it was gathering energy to cook that thought. And at that point, God won't intercepted it. He still had an opportunity to decompress and let go. 
remember I talked about negative, negative emotion is supposed to be right. That waste product, treat it as a waste product. It's not good for your system. You see the digestive system will take what's good and will let go of what's bad. You are supposed to be letting go, shaking your body off, right? Because it's trapped. Anger can be trapped. Frustration can be trapped. You will feel that sensation in your body. These skills that I teach in my school will let you shake it off, right? Treat it as a waste byproduct. If you don't, and you keep carrying it around daily, daily, they do damage. So God intercepted. There was a conversation. Go and read it again. God said, you, right, what you are, right, you're about to be trapped. It's like, it says something like sin is encroaching at your door. It's the best place of sin. Thoughts being mixed up with energy, creating a chemical reaction, and you're about to destroy yourself and other people because there are consequences. And God gave that moment for him to rethink, rethink, relearn, unlearn, let go of this anger, of these thoughts that is cycling in your system. Because if you don't let it go, it's building up energy. And when that energy is strong enough, you will do something about it. Most of the people who do bad things, it's not the first time they think about it. It's when they sit with it, sit with it, they get more angry, more angry, more angry, more angry. It intensifies. And then suddenly, boom. Okay. Read that, read that scripture again. You see it there. Positive thoughts releases energy for forward mobility just by design, just the way, for example, the way a car is designed. If you press the accelerator, you move forward. You press the brake, it stops. Same thing. The way God designed it, because he doesn't want you to damage yourself and damage the world. Positive thoughts will move you forward. Negative thoughts will break. The energy is stuck inside your body. Okay? Yes, that feeling. There are some thoughts now. There are some things you remember now. There are some people you're going to remember. Something that happened that you remember. You're carrying it in memory. If you open your mind, if your mind touches that memory again, it will release the same reaction, right? Emotion, feelings, as if that thing just happened right now. Even if it's 10 years ago, even if it's 20 years ago, it doesn't matter. That same thought that you've stored in your database, if you allow it to bubble to your conscious mind, it will give exactly the same instruction. It will release in your body. You will feel what you felt. It will look, it will feel so real, right? You will feel exactly what you felt before. So that's why the, the, the past, I say, if you don't deal with the past, the deep past will deal with you. And the best thing you can do with the past, there are two things, forgiveness and gratitude. Forgiveness. Whatever those things are, forgiveness is taking your energy, your end, all the energy those thoughts are trapped. When you forgive and change that thought, the energy would be released. It will be released for something else. Maybe the power to create wealth. You can now use it to build your business. But if those energies trapped in, oh, this person did this, this person did that, this person did this, this person did that, you've attached energy to all kinds of thoughts. Now, you, the mind is what, what do you want to do what do you want to do about all these people yeah you want to do this you want to when you see them you do this when you see that you do that you will not reply this email you will not reply their call trap 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 energy so it's like hibernation you've stored energy in all kinds of thoughts and you're carrying those thoughts around they weigh people down because when it is time to ascend to next level this is why people cannot ascend you're carrying too much weight <laughs> you know if you want to board a plane the plane has leave it. Wait, leave it. 25. Like he should tell you. Oh boy. <laughs> you see, this plane is not for your entire, <laughs> it's not for your past. <laughs> you see this ascension? This business you want to build? You have to let go of some nonsense. That's why I designed this for my entrepreneurs. You see, your attempt to go higher to self-actualize, <laughs> this past you are you're carrying around. The emotions you've not dealt with, you can't carry them. The weight is too heavy. It, it doesn't allow you to take off. Right? You know why? When you get into the plane, you have to fasten your seatbelt. There is more pressure. 
and everything will shake. Everything you don't bolt down, everything you don't deal with, everything you don't confront, everything you don't wrestle with, everything you don't address, they will start getting loose. <laughs> It will bubble up because the mind has to be subjected to solve new challenges. And if the mind is carrying old stuff, it needs you to, to give it more firepower to power your future. Your plane needs all energy to take off. So the weight of the past has to be shed. The mind needs more space. It's like when you want to use your computer, you know your computer will say <laughs> what you want to install right now. The success you want to install, there is no space for it. That's when you start searching. What have you saved on your computer? Which files are important, which are not? Which relationships are important that will not go to the future? This is when you start deleting. To make room for success. To make room for prosperity, to make room for your ascension, you have to delete. Because if you don't delete, there are some names you need to say, you no longer mean anything here. Good. It was fantastic what we shared in the past. You were good to me. I was good to you. Praise God. I'm gratitude. I'm thankful for you. And I forgive you. Because all the stories of who did you do, so you, it's taking up space in your system. Too much space. Space that you now need to put for customers and clients. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know, <laughs> okay, this is not too funny. Please laugh with me. Laugh with me. Let's laugh. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to make room for <laughs> invoices and POs. That's what I need to be thinking about. Who I would invoice. Oh my God. <laughs> not, not who you want to get even with. <laughs> oh my gosh. You see why you do this work? The byproduct is peace of mind. <laughs> you have to find peace with yourself and with other people in the world. Many people right now, it's corrosive. You are reacting. Everything, you talk to somebody, react. Talk to another person, react. Who deal with this stuff? I give you the tools in my scope. The EQ class is the human design class. That's, that is my recommendation for everybody in the world. Listen, everybody needs to do this work. Because where God wants to take all of us, he who has clean hands, pure heart. Your heart, EQ, your heart, clean it up. Your hands, your behavior, your action, the things you are doing with your life, the energy you are releasing, how you are interacting with people, how you are behaving, how you are thinking. Clean hands, pure hearts. Keep it pure. Because you need pure, pure hands to undo good money. Do you know that? <laughs> to undo people. People will be good to you. If you are not good, if you don't embody, if you don't deal with the negativity and be positive, you cannot do good work. And if you don't do good work, who is going to reward you? Rewarding you for bad behavior, rewarding you for recklessness, rewarding, who will reward you for anger, who will reward you for unforgiveness? God will not even, the reward of those things is what's already going on, confusion, anger, all those things. The, the reward of it, you are right? It says when sin has finished, is death. The reward of iniquity and all of these things is not pleasant, here on earth and afterlife. Okay, preacher toying. Okay, okay. Oh, we've gone an hour already. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> okay, Chico is laughing. Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> Negative thoughts trap energy. It is the stop sign that puts a break on mobility. You see, so when that, those thoughts, the mind listens to your thoughts. Yes, the, your thoughts, yourself, there's the self, there's the mind. The mind is your processing, information processing, right? system okay and when it brings in thoughts it mixes energy sends right signals to the body to prepare the body to do work but when that signal is negative and it releases anger releases unforgiveness releases that thing, you know what happens you just shocked your system your body will, will just it, it puts your body in a state of not being well and when you're not well, you're not supposed to drive your car. 
right? If a if a driver is drunk, no clarity, confusion. If a driver is confused, he's not supposed to be behind it. He's not supposed to be accelerating on the road. The driver will drive, you know, will damage themselves and damage other people that they come in contact with. Right? That's how that works. So negative emotion is God's own way of stopping you from damaging yourself or damaging other people. So what then happens to the energy that <clears throat> that thought took from you? Because thoughts will take energy from you because it needs, it's, it's, it's like an instruction to take an action. It's like, I want to do this. Okay, here's the energy to do this. <clears throat> it's kind of like the first investment. That's why I say, even for entrepreneurship, for business development, any of those things, the first investment is not money, it's your own energy. Many people say they don't have money. Listen, if you, if you need energy to create first before money, so anytime it's so you are spending energy, right? Energy is your own currency, your life currency. So the thoughts inside you is saying, okay, I need $10, I need $20. I need this level of energy to perform this type of, type of work. And so your heart will give it permission because you said, I believe it. You didn't stop it because you can cancel that process and say, I'm not angry anymore. I forgive. So when you say you forgive, it's like you're saying, no, I don't want to use my energy to have this conversation. I don't want to use my energy to pick this phone call. I don't want to use my energy to talk to this person. I don't want to use my energy to go to a place that I know will not give me what I want. That's the power of the self. To say no to investing energy in things that are destructive and then releasing more energy to things that are creative. Right? So anytime you want to spend energy, a thought will come. Oh, this person did this. This person did that. Let me do that. If you say yes, it takes your energy. If you say no, if you're able to talk yourself, self-therapy, you're able to have a conversation with yourself, you can hold back and say, no, I don't care. Let this person, when you start saying you don't, like this is where peace is. You're not giving your energy to, to war and chaos because the war you fight externally, your mind, your body first will fight it. So what then happens is when those thoughts hijack your energy, you release energy. Yes, you got angry. Yes, you got upset. So your energy now is trapped in that thought. But you didn't take action. You couldn't punch the person. You couldn't call the person. So that energy and that thought is still sitting in your body. That's why exercise, there are certain things, singing praise and worship. <laughs> there are many things you have to do to your body now because your mind already released the energy. It's now sitting in your body. That's why people will feel stress on their back, on their neck. Your hand can clean, right? You can be sweaty. Your body will experience energy and thoughts because you said you're about to do something. That's why you will slap somebody, <laughs> right? Because the energy was released. You gave it room as it was passing your table. That's why I say, if you want to be a boss, start bossing your energy first, right? Is that when your mind brings a thought to your table, your conscious memory, is this what you want? The moment you approve it, <laughs> you put a stamp, I approve this action. I approve this message. You have spent, you've attached your, you have released energy from your heart to attach to that or to go and perform that task. And so let's say you didn't perform the task. It's stuck. Part of letting go when I use this analogy and comparison between digestive system is that this digestive, yes, you ate food. You gave permission. You opened your mouth. You ate a cookie. You ate cake. You ate sugar. Okay. As your digestive system is processing, processing that stuff, it has knowledge, in-baked knowledge that will help it decide what to send and what to release. It has a memory. It has a way of knowing what's bad for you and letting go. So even once it is trapped in your body, you still can develop the skills, which I teach in my school. You can develop the skills for every trapped, right? Negativity. You now have to do the work. Therapy, do the work. 
of listening again to those thoughts and deciding I don't want it in my system. And the moment you decide you don't want it, I'm telling you, peace will, peace will come on you. The moment you forgive and you truly, truly forgive, the next time those thoughts come to your mind, they hold no power over you again because you've removed your energy. You have removed your energy. And once you remove those energy, the thoughts have zero power on you anymore. But as long as your thoughts still has those energy, your system is like not in a happy state. But when you do this work, <laughs> you will be glowing because you can focus better. So I don't know why people didn't teach us, but again, these are new revelations, right? Because I use spiritual psychology, Christian-based, faith-based. This is the power of revelation, right? Plus my own experiences and my, right? I'm teaching you things that, Everybody in the world, if everybody in the world can watch this video, take those classes, world peace. <laughs> okay. Your mind creates chemical reactions in your body to create sensation, right? And the self, okay, you are the approver of those behavior, consciously or subconsciously. There's so much more in my school. When I talk about conscious, subconscious, your storytelling, how you tell stories that build your identity, by who you are, because many of the time, God, okay, wants to disrupt old identity. Saul needs to become Paul, given a new assignment. Saul was busy using his energy to destroy. The same energy that he was using to destroy. God's encounter with him, that same energy was redirected. So when you encounter God, you encounter this type of content, transformation, right, repentance, okay, is that part of the journey is, is still the same energy, still the same life force. But you were thinking, Paul was thinking he was doing good things for God. But God has to challenge him. Listen, this is the person you are, you are persecuting me. Those actions, thoughts, and behavior, you're using your energy to destroy. I want to use your energy to create. For the rest of Paul's life, he used his life force. The same power, the energy God gave him, he used it to power the church right? The New Testament. He wrote books. He traveled. He did all kinds of things to create, to minister for positivity. He used it to challenge people, correct people, elevate people, provide revelation. It's the same Paul. This is the difference. This is the power of this work. Is that your energy is your life force and you will give account for what you are doing with it. The results you are generating here on earth, reckless, whatever that is, even if you say you are not doing anything, you are dormant. You are in abomination. You are not doing anything for God. You are still on the sidelines. Part of it is that what, what, listen, any human that is standing still in of itself, even energy needs to flow. You see, that's more advanced. Energy, nuclear reaction. You are carrying a force that is supposed to be flowing through head. Anybody that is in dormant state, it cannot, you cannot feel well. You know why? Don't, please. Help, let me help you understand. When I say these things, it's not that I'm saying, oh, I don't want you to feel well. No, no, no. I'm saying let's gain some, some awareness education is that when power is being held in a vessel, when we start talking about physics, nuclear reactors, is that the vessel has to be, if the energy is not flowing, if a river is not flowing and it's standing still, a river that is supposed to flow, it will be stinking right because humans here on earth you're supposed to use energy every day even in the physical world if you don't if you eat more than you burn energy you will, you will see it in the body right if you consume more than you are using that's also part of what's happening in content consumption is that you are not creating content you're just consuming you're not producing you're just a consumer a consumer is good you that's not how we're designed you're supposed to be burning energy you're supposed to be using up in a creative productive way the energy within you. And anybody that is not using energy, part of the problem is what I'm also saying is that if you put yourself in an hibernating state, you still feel restless. Restlessness. You have a job, they're paying you, but you're restless. Why? Because you have more energy inside you, ready to come out, but you don't know where to put that energy. You have more energy than you are using. Your job right, is only taking a portion of your energy. You still have energy reserve. 
that you could be doing more. You could be volunteering in your church. You could be using that energy to do more in this world. But anybody that holds on to that energy, you will feel res your conscience will tell you you have more energy you are not spending. And that in of itself is a dysregulated state. Okay? It's like a it's like a plane, a ship that's a ship that was designed for the sea, a plane that was designed for the air. It's sitting on the tarmac. It will rot. It will just decay. Because mobility, energy, when energy is moving, when you are exercising, when you are jogging, when you are moving, your entire system works better and you are in a better healthy state. And when you don't jog, you don't move, you just sit down, you just sit down, you don't do anything, you don't do anything, you don't, it's not healthy. We were, I'm just saying by design, this is the human design. I'm just trying to explain to you revelation of how God formed us. Hopefully when you understand this, you'll take better action. We are here to take action. Okay? I'm starting to wrap up now. Let me quickly read the notes out. Your mind creates, chem I've said that, it creates chemical reaction in your body. It creates a sensation, okay? But yourself gives it meaning. Those sensations, collectively, we've come up with how to describe those sensations. If you feel this way, it is hunger. If you feel this way, it is this. So the labeling, and one of the things um, I had to do, and I encourage you to do it, that every single emotion, human emotion, is... That label is masking a lot of information. If somebody says anger, what is the meaning of anger? If somebody says fear, what's the meaning of fear? Most of the people who came up with emotional descriptors, they are descriptors of the sensation in your body. And so we can communicate it to one another. We can see when somebody is angry, right? This is a communication, right? Words allow us to communicate. But, but the full communication of emotion is hiding beneath the sensation. So fear, what is fear? What is the fear emotion? What's the doubt? Because when you want to do this work, you now have to see fear is a set of thoughts that's making you, you're seeing something about your future or something coming at you. And you feel that you are not powerful enough to stop it from happening. You think it will happen or it has happened. You feel, you feel like you're not powerful to resist. The self needs to be empowered so that you are no longer afraid. Doubt. What is doubt? When you say doubt, 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 it gives confusion. But doubt is when you split yourself. You don't know what, whether you should turn right or turn left. You are driving a car. You, there's a fork in the road. A, B. What do you do? If you do B, you don't know the outcomes of B. If you do A, you don't know what will happen in A. And so it only takes courage for somebody to just pick decision. The self has to decide. But when the self doesn't want to decide and doesn't want to have responsibility for the outcomes of their decision, and you don't make any decision, you put your mind in a confused state. What are you going to eat for dinner? You have options. Life always gives you options. It's your responsibility to decide. When you don't decide, your mind will say, until you tell us what to eat, they can't do anything. Even your spouse asks you, what do you want for dinner? Mm, I don't know. Well, the spouse will wait. Tell me. Tell me. Life is always saying, tell me, tell me. But as long as you're not telling life what you want, you're stuck. You cannot get anything. A double-minded person will not receive anything from God. Because clarity, focus, prayer itself is, being, is you being direct. This is what I want. I have to believe it. I have to have confidence. And you move forward. So you only move forward. You get rid of doubt when you're ready to move forward, when you're ready to take a choice. And part of it is just courage. The courage to choose. The courage to grab the bull by the arm and just go left or go right. Pick one. When you're not ready to pick, you're at the fork of the road. Oh. Right? Education as well helps you make better decisions. So when you start seeing each of these emotions, this is the work I do, right? Like, listen, when I encounter doubt, this, this, they don't explain everything, but go beneath and start saying, what is doubt? Because once you understand this, part of the coaching one-on-one -on -one is then saying, okay, what decision do you have to make right now that you've not made? Oh. Oh, what's putting you in the confusion state is you have a job. 
but God is calling you to be an entrepreneur. And you're like, but my job, but entrepreneurship. But my job, but entrepreneurship. So you're waking up with two alternative options and you don't know how to navigate those two. Oh, and at that point, you can gain better insight. Like I can tell you, I've gone through that. So I know it and I'm telling you, I was in corporate and life outside of corporate was calling me. Destiny was called. I know what it, it is like to have one leg here, one leg there. But at some point, you have to take the jump and decide and, and just listen to God. But if you are one here, one here, which one are you praying for? <laughs> Survival or your future? These are junction things that, you know, makes people doubt and confused. Is that you are being presented with options for your life, for the future. And the self has to be empowered. One of the empowerment is exposing yourself. That's why I say expose yourself to more people. Take more classes. Go for workshops. Go to my events. Listen to me, right? Is that when you educate yourself about, okay, if I turn left, what's at the end of turn left? If I turn right, what's at the end of turn right? That will help you decide like, oh, right? This road will lead to this. This road will lead to this. Which one, do, right? So you have to slow down and learn and decide, okay, what do I really want? Do I want to go to California? Do I want to go to Texas? The Bible will say, <laughs> many is the road, many go on a road, broad is the road that leads to this, but narrow is the road that leads to that. God gave you information that your choices, I hope you choose this road. I put before you this, this, this. I hope you choose. Education, enlightenment, revelation guides us on the choices we need to be making in life. God will tell you, don't get angry. But you can get angry. You can deny the education, the revelation. Even after this show, you can still do anything you want to do. Nobody stops you. But trust me, at least now you're, you're informed. So God himself designs us to give us options about life. In fact, ideas are options of what you can create for your future. You can decide to pick them. You can decide not to. So even the self has to be educated to improve decision-making process. Okay. I think I beat that down, right? So how do you read your system of negative emotions? How do you brush your teeth? How do you shower? Okay, how do you clean up? How do you clean your house? How do you clean this? How do you clean your mind? Because that's the assignment. We need skills for that. Okay, forgiveness, gratitude, self-therapy. I tell you a lot of stuff to do in my classes. One of it is um, just... I call it the thermostat. I designed it right to help people. It's like if you have to describe what how you want to feel, not how you're feeling, but what how you want to feel about your life. What does happiness mean? What does joy mean? Right? The fruits of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. When you do all of this work, and you allow the Holy Spirit right to educate yourself to do more work. You are supposed to feel joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. That's what we ought all to be experiencing. But we also know there's opposition. There's there's um, another way people feel anger. This this this. It talks. The Bible talks about the consequences of all of those things. Go and read your book again. Your Bible again about anger. All of these things and the consequences of those who practice those things. And whether here on earth or after life, how God perceived those because God sees it as a choice. You see, God sees it as a choice. He will tell you a life, you know, a life lived by the flesh or a life lived by the spirit. What does it mean? Your mind that is programmed, that tells you this is what blah, 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 can make decisions on your behalf and has consequences. Your mind can be hijacked. Your energy will follow. And you do things every day you're not supposed to do. It's a choice. Or you can be more patient. You can be more kind. You can be more loving. You can be more forgiving. You can be more, 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 more. It's a choice. But when people don't do anything, listen, by default, you've already chosen. If you don't do this class, if you don't gain these skills, if you don't start wrestling, listen, we go to church, we sit down, we listen. It's still content. Oh, every Sunday content. Every Sunday content. What we need now is to wash ourselves. Washing of the word. <laughs> We've been sitting in church. For how many? 40, 50 years. You were born there, baptized there, on and on. The challenge of today is to use everything you've been gaining. You know, that's why I said content alone. You know, faith without works. By your works, I will know you have faith. 
you can go to church right you can consume content all you want and listen to all the amazing things if you don't change the condition of your heart they don't give back that's why it says you know some people lose the power of the gospel they live lose the power of spirituality when they don't take action people who don't go to church they are kinder you know many people say oh how come you say you're a christian because there's a certain level of expectation that if we know better we're supposed to do better but if you know better and you are not doing better it's because the skill is missing so i make it very practical for us to actually practice and and because prosperity is the best place of obedience okay come to church <laughs> come to church but build build he says upon peter i'll build my church right god wants to build something marvelous on you but you have to be a pillar you have to be strong emotionally you have to gain the strength you have to be courageous it takes courage to forgive you know god will say vengeance is mine it takes courage to say hey god this is your kids i give it to you just leave, let them leave me alone i'm not going to engage you don't even know enough to engage you don't have the power to engage yeah yeah if you put your energy behind something you just all of those things hijack your energy you're giving your energy to things you have no control over lots of resources in my school again you need to start offering people understanding not judgment you see there's no way you do this work on yourself you know how difficult it is to do this work that now when you start seeing people you will know this person has done the work. This person has not done it. You offer people grace and you leave them alone. Because if you engage people who haven't done this work, they will trap you. It's an entrapment. So we are taught how to brush our teeth, how to read of our body of topical germs, how to use water, the power of water to wash your hands. Now we need to have new tools for our mind and our emotions. Our emotions are energies, our mind process thoughts. Okay? We now need to learn how to wash our mind, how to clean our heart. And this is the assignment Jesus gave us as well. In order to do this well, you must understand the human design and how to process information and right and store info. Listen, there are seven classes, seven, more than five hours of classes that is bundled together. This is a life-changing program. PowerPoint, I show you all the things. This is how you impute process output. This is how you create feelings. This is how you create emotion. You now need to start telling new stories. Broke it down. Okay, you need the knowledge of human design to move forward, right? So the question is, what are you, have you stored in your system that the mind is using to create your current reality? You literally have to take a look again, take a look again at your own system because you're, you're carrying your past around. All the stories, all your encounters, they're studying you, the higher you want to go, you have to now check in which one is useful, which one is useless. You have to lighten the load because God is about to take you to higher grounds. Okay? Because those thoughts have been used to build your belief system and your identity, who you are today. And so when God encounters Saul, it changes their name, changes their story, and sets them on a new path. Paul was doing all kinds of things. Saul was doing this, this, this. God said, okay, that's your old. I'm giving you the new. Right? Simon Peter, upon you, I'll build my church. Simon, Peter, when God wants to do something new, trust me, I always say this, you have to change. And anybody that doesn't want to change, Many are called, few are chosen. Your process of surrendering yourself to the process is what your, makes your election sure. The promised land is available, but who entered the promised land? Okay. What is in you is what you keep, is what you manifest. Whatever you're carrying around, the thoughts is what your mind will use to create your feelings and emotions. <laughs> And out of your feelings and emotions, your body will be primed to take action. Right? If you carry negative thoughts, every day when you wake up, the way you are processing reality, the way you think about government, the way you think about people, you already know it. It, it flashes into your subconscious. You wake up, oh, this person is sitting, you know, your spouse, your children. How you think about your children, your spouse, your, your, your boss, your customers, your clients. That's what you are manifesting. In fact, your entire reality here on earth, you will experience it in your body. 
how you think and the emotions in your body is your life experience. Mm. You cannot experience life outside of your own body. <laughs> your life experience. You and if you want a good experience, clean house. If you want to live in a clean house, clean house. It's like your house. If you want your car to be well, clean it. The conditions of your heart, right? Your mind, your heart is is how you're experiencing life. Is what you eat, and this thing feeds itself, right? It becomes an echo chamber. You keep repeating the same thing. So anyone that wants to manifest a prosperous life must develop the skills to nurture their spirits, their soul. Your soul is your heart and your mind, and the body. Okay. And you want to only use positive outcomes to create a positive life and experience. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thoughts. Thoughts is the input of your life. Your body and system will process it and create and generate exactly what you give to it. And you have the power to choose. Exercise, start exercising your power to choose. So the complete EQ human design classes, right, will help you develop the EQ skills that will give you emotional freedom emotional freedom is detaching your energy from negativity and once you have more energy you can use it to create your business the life you want you can be more productive because once you start having positive thoughts you create a positive life okay we have the responsibility now okay we're all right we have the responsibility now and ultimately you give account so that's it this was deep this was deep <laughs> okay does anybody want to ask a question but i know sometimes people just want to eat or eat this up and just but let, let me let me see if, if you're available but i know if you're still just ruminating uh i understand but why is the why is um let's see let's see Come up, give some feedback, okay? Give some feedback if you, or you can email me afterwards, okay? If you want to email me afterwards. But that's, it's a wrap. You, okay, thumbs up. <laughs> but <laughs> was this too much though? Type, was this too much? Was this too much? Love? How do I interpret that? You loved it. <laughs> Are you able to come up? <laughs> Listen, guys. Oh, let's see. I want you to come up. <laughs> How are you? Doing? Happy Friday. How are you? I'm doing great. Give me your feedback, your thoughts. You've sat through the entire session. It's, it's an hour plus. And um, what are your thoughts? Uh, hello. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. So something's going on with my phone. That's why I was a bit reluctant to come up. Um, but I wanted to do you justice. Um, as you can tell, I frequent your rooms and every single time I come in, it's like nurturing my soul. Mm. You, know, you speak about your diet, not just being uh, the food consumption or what we already consume, but actually even a larger part of it is what we feed our minds. That's all part of our diet. I love the way you bring together. Um, for me, it's repetition as well. So the more I hear you speak about it, the more I reprogram and ingrain it within myself. And that's one of the reasons that I frequent this room. Uh, another reason is your delivery. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it, it's how it should be for me. Mm. Um, for me, it's good for me. I don't know about others, but for me, I like my tail being held to the fire. Um, <laughs> you do it in a, in a fashion that's entertaining as well as educating, inspiring, motivating, and that's why I keep frequenting, but I just yeah. want to come up and say thank you for nourishing my soul yeah. and my spirit yeah. on this Friday. Uh, and I will never stop coming as long as you never stop creating. Yeah. So thank you once again for being yeah. here. Thank you for continuously bringing this. And I think that you've truly embodied the fact that even if it, uh, even if it's for one person's ears, your thoughts are not your own and you're merely the vehicle uh, to deliver that. So thank you for embracing your alignment, your calling, and your oh. kingdom assignment. I think takes those my wiser words. Happy oh. Friday. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and I don't usually say that, but... Whew. Oh. You know, 
we are all being programmed to be intellectually smart, like IQ, IQ, I'm smart. This is, I, I have this degree, I have that degree, I can do this, do you know who I have? But when all is said and done, you know, when you talk about nourishing your soul, the heart of the matter, right, is that the human to human relationship, how we connect, how we resonate, how we love, how we care for one another, is deeper than what most people are doing out there. So even though I teach hardcore technical business skills, right? I teach, listen, my class is the most advanced. My school has the most advanced training program for entrepreneurs and business owners in the world. I do projects for United Nations, right? I've trained entrepreneurs from 38 countries. This is a global movement. So I, and I've started as a strategist for Fortune One, biggest, largest company in the world, 500 billion, right? I serve on the board of a publicly traded company, right? NAS, right? So I also, uh, by the way, I also um, serve the United States, right? Secretary of Commerce on the Illinois District Export Council. So when it comes to the highest levels of performance in the world of business, right? I'm, I'm there. But what I know, is that when destiny calls, you also have to anoint your head. <laughs> your mind has to go where God is trying to take you, pretty much. Your mind has to be removed from nonsense. You see, I'm very fierce. This is not playtime. This is not popcorn. This is not sitting around Netflix. This is this is your like this is your destiny i pray i don't know what else is going to be more important to you than what we just discussed today i don't know your heart your mind your soul your spirit this is more than money because your wealth is hidden in your heart i didn't cover it today but part of the reason i do this work is that many people's wealth is buried beneath nonsense emotions nonsense thoughts when you pray that God should bless you, your blessings, and you don't clear your heart to receive, you are still tying up. You need energy to receive. You see, Jesus will say your faith made you whole. It's your own release of energy. You have to en you have to release the energy of emotion to believe. You have to attach your own energy to whatever God is telling you. So thoughts can be flying in your head for five years. But until you you clear your heart, if your energy, you know your back, you know <laughs> you know your phone, if your phone shows ninety five percent, you can't be downloading anything. Even when you try to download, to say go and recharge, go and recharge, go and get your power back. EQ allows you to recharge. You need more energy for the next level for the ascension. If a plane wants to take off, it needs fuel. If a rocket wants to ascend, it needs, it has to, your jet pack, you have to pack more energy. But many people's energy are depleted. Why? Negative thoughts. Negative belief system. Right? They've associated their identity. They've become somebody that doesn't believe again. So anybody that doesn't believe again cannot receive. You can't receive because receiving, receiving is an energy exercise. Believing is an energy process. It is the permission to make those thoughts true in your life. Remember I talked about thoughts hijack, right? Not just hijack, is that your approval, when something comes to your table, <laughs> just think about it. A thought comes to your table, comes into consciousness. God is trying to talk to you, it comes into consciousness. If you don't give it energy, it will, it will go away. You didn't approve it. Thoughts that come to your mind, you give it energy, it will persist, it will manifest. That's how this thing works. And part of the manifestation process is the first place you're going to experience manifestation is your body, emotions, feelings. You're going to feel the physical manifestation of your thoughts. Your thoughts will be converted through your central nervous system into feelings and emotion. So you will, it's also an indicator. Are you sure this is what you want to create? Because you can create happiness in your body you can create joy in your body you can create fulfillment in your body you can like listen the good feeling you can manifest you carry 
a chemical system. The central nervous system, there's electrical circuits, there's chemical. You carry your own pharmacy. <laughs> you can drug yourself good or bad. When you drug yourself negativity, you go, ouch, pain. You don't want to feel pain. You can be happy. You can be fulfilled. You can be joyful. All of the chemicals is, is inside your system. And what drives and determines what those really what is released in your body is your mind how it processes thoughts the thoughts you throw at it it will throw it back to you in your body it's a signal of what's going on in your system so this is very deep because this is where it connects with prosperity wealth creation is that let me tell you this you see the wealth you will create outside of you you will first create it inside of you this is another topic. I'm not going to open that. I'm not going to fully open it. I'm just giving you a taste of why I teach this way. People want to build a business. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to build a business. Listen, you build it inside of you before you can build it outside of you. You have to believe it. You have to visualize it. You have to do so much work that requires so much energy inside your mind. Your mind will do a lot of work to map out that business. So if your mind, 95% capacity of your mind is tied up with negative emotion, it cannot create, it cannot create. It will be confused. You told me you're angry with this person. Let's resolve that before you make me do more work. Because willpower, listen, when you wake up in the morning and where you, you deplete is like battery power. You wake up in the morning, you might have, if you do this work well, you have 100% charge. By the end of the day, you are tired. The mind gets tired. It gets worn out. The more work it does all through the day. So if you start your day, <laughs> listen, if you start your day giving energy to useless or irrelevant stuff, someone <laughs> on a Monday morning was sending me, I'm like, listen, delete, delete. I don't have time for this. This is not my priority, right? This priority your emergency is not my emergency. So this, this self has now to protect the mind. Why? Because the mind is a tool for your manifestation. If you keep allowing it to manifest negativity, negative relationship, negative people, negative this, negative that. Listen, to build a business, you need good people in your life. You need to be good. Until you are good, you're not going to attract good people. This is part of manifestation. Listen, if I come close to you and you open your mouth and you start saying, oh, the government is this. Oh, Biden is that. Oh, Biden, Trump is. If that's all you are saying, I will run away from you. And you ought to be running from those people because very, very soon they will recruit you as well. In fact, there's, there's, there's another thing I talk about the self. People who don't do this work, there are some categories I put them in. It's either they're a victim, right? They, are, they don't have the power to choose and manifest. So they, they think other people owe them and owe other people, they are the victims of reality because you don't have the power to manifest. You don't have the skills that you can do anything you want to do and become anything you want to become. But you have to commit, you have to focus, you have to invest your own energy. How much energy you are ready to invest in your future is what will determine what, how far you push all of this. So when I encounter people and they are not invested energy, I'm like, you first put your energy. It's not even money. You first desire, desire, desire. The size of your desire is going to be the size of your capacity for wealth. So in the laws of sowing and reaping, the energy you put inside is all you've got to manifest. But so this is related to entrepreneurship and business development and wealth creation. And so I realized that when I say join the 10-week accelerator, do the right... 10 subjects, branding, marketing, sales, right, pricing, all these things that I teach in the business school. I realized that many people, it's almost like they've chosen the spectator seats in their own life instead of wearing the jersey and being a player and becoming a champion in their own life. They are literally sitting on the spectator seat and eating popcorn and expecting manifestation to happen. You cannot win if you are not pushing, if you are not exercising, if you are not training. That's why you can, if you go to the Olympics, only those who enroll in the journey of life are the ones manifesting and carrying their trophy. 
Those are the people who need a coach. Those are the people who need training. Those who want performance and results. People who just are dreaming and they don't want to put energy in pursuit of success. And they are eating popcorn. And they are listening to Toy and they are listening to con content. I tell you, you will listen, and but nothing changes. You know why? Until you change, until you do this inner work, until you release your energy and you reinvest your energy, you are still taking content one year after, two years after, five years after. Why? Because nobody that you're watching on social media or on TV is going to do your own work for you. Nobody will carry your baby, right? Nobody will bet your dreams. Nobody will bet your visions for you. So about time. So this is the emergency, right? This is the sense of urgency I need people to arrive at. You are just delaying your process if you are not running your race. Are you crawling? Are you walking? Or are you flying? Or are you ready to quantum leap? Messages like this rewire everything, right? One hour, two hours. My classes, hours and hours and hours and hours of classes. You rewire yourself. Right? We have to think differently. We have to be. So, anybody that doesn't want to give energy, you don't want to show up, you don't want to do any class, you don't want to think, you don't want to shape, you don't want to challenge yourself. Transformation. Caterpillar to butterfly. Only the butterfly can fly. Even the caterpillar can sing, Oh, I want to fly, I want to fly. But you will build your own cocoon, you will climb into it, you will melt, you will dissolve your old self, and the new self will emerge. It's the new self that actually can handle wealth. Because there's responsibility tied to all the promises of God. That's why you have to clean your hands, pure heart, right? Is that what God wants to give you, the promised land? You cannot be saying, oh, you're like ants. You can, you will see Goliath, you will tear down Goliath. That's power. Right? You will tell a different story. Not, oh, ants, this. You'll be like, listen, those who will be crowned king, their mind must be correct. That's anointing of the head. You cannot be David and be say, and be joining people who are not king and say, oh, giant, listen, giants, I'm about to finish you today. You see this catapult, these skills, the belief in self, the confidence in self comes out of doing this work. The power to create wealth, the power to create wealth, that power too is the one that will power your life. Your mind must be, okay, at your service. It's a tool. And you have to put it to work to create anything. You will put your you will send your mind and your body on an errand. Your mind will open. So anything that tells you, oh, I'm shy, I can't do this. These are the thoughts you need to delete, by the way. Oh, I can't do this. People like me, this, this, this. These are the thoughts robbing you of destiny. Oh, because I'm immigrant, become a these are the killers of destiny that hold people back. It's the cage. It's the cage holding the lion back. Open your cage. Emotional intelligence is, listen, I can rescue myself. See ya, circus master. I got to go. I'm going. I was born to rule. <laughs> when you wake up and you say you are born to rule, you need power though. You need power to rule. But that power starts from inside of you. It's, nobody gives you this power, by the way. It's not external. So if you are following people and they are making promises, I can help you create, create your website. I can help you do this. I can help you do After they've done all these things for you, what about you? Who will speak on your behalf? Who is going to negotiate on your behalf? Who is going to resist? Who is going to show up? That's why I am more concerned about building of the self and then equipping and giving you tools, equipping you to run your race, to travel on your own journey and navigate, turn right, turn left, and don't let anybody self-sabotage i mean let me leave you with one story from my dad okay one story from my dad <laughs> he's late now okay as a teenage girl <laughs> living in west africa and my dad was the one that taught me how to drive oh those days you know females driving a young a young lady maybe 17 18 i don't know driving behind a car on the streets of busy african road Many people think they can cheat, uh, you know, they can scare her, you know, like, oh, this, right? They don't know who my father is. <laughs> they don't know who my father is. <laughs> so on this day, by the way, I was driving. My dad was in the passenger seat, okay? And little me behind the car, 
Oh, my dad gave me so much confidence, man. That's why I always say, bless the men who give strength and confidence to their women. But that's another topic. Okay, let me come back to my story. So I was driving, and my dad is sitting next to me, you know, turn right, turn left, giving me instructions. And I was like, okay, okay. And then one taxi cab saw that a young girl, not even a grown woman, a young teenage girl was behind a fancy car. And then the taxi driver wanted to intimidate with, you know, you know, you know how driving is there. The people don't, many people don't write the rules, right? The person wanted to just come, right? You are driving. Somebody wanted to edge you. Hmm. You see that day? My dad screamed at me and he shouted, block him, block him, block him. <laughs> Block him, block him, block him. You have right of way. You have right of way. Somebody else is, doesn't have right of way. And once I heard my father, the voice, you have to hear the vo right voice. If people want to intimidate, intimidate you, you have to, there has to be your father. Your father in heaven has to whisper into your ears. Okay? Okay? And he said, block him. It's your time. It's your road. Go. And little me was like, yes, yes, yes. I blocked the guy. I did well. When we passed that scenario, my dad now looked at me and pointed at me and said, listen, never ever let anybody run you off the road. Meaning being scared when you don't undo your business. Okay. When you don't know your rights. If you don't think straight, if people confuse you, if people mess you up. And you don't recover your confidence. You don't come back and, and stand your ground and go get what belongs to you. Many people have been run off the road of life by thoughts, assertions, intimidations, right? People who pushed you verbally all through life. The voices that didn't believe in you. The voices that confused you. Listen, you have to gain your power back. They've done their damage. They've gone. Your job is to come back. You have to come back. Because there are times when people push you back. They push you out of the room. They tell you you don't belong and you believe them. Your job is not to believe them. But if you don't know your rights, if you don't know what is yours, if you don't know what God is giving you, people can cheat you from success. People you should never bow to, you can be bowing to them. You can be living in desert land when God promised you a promised land. You can be living, you can be on a job, right? Entry level when you could be the CEO or vice president. People live beneath what is theirs when they allow their mind to be confused and programmed by limitation. Whatever you believe, you manifest. You better be tuning your mind to what your father in heaven is saying to you. Believe that, manifest that, and detoxify all these thoughts. All these other thoughts, you have to cast it down. Whatever hold they have on you, Bible talks about stronghold. Whatever made you believe them, part of the reason people believe them is most of the time, the devil uses authority figures to declare things on you. Don't let anybody else tell you who you are. Make sure God is the only one you are listening to. Don't let newspaper fall. Don't let the past, stories of your own grandfather or mother. Oh, this is this. Don't go here. Don't go here. So now in a free society, you, those thoughts are still replaying. They programmed you at five years old that whites do this, blacks do this. This place is for you. This place is not for you. Their own scenario, their own life. They had to navigate different things. So they came up with a database. Generational causes, you are taking on a belief system that you, were not, you are trying to apply old thinking. When God is saying, I am doing a new thing, can you not perceive it? But God will say, I can't pour it into old wineskin. You see, you have to shed all the thoughts, beliefs of limitation, the confusion, intimidation, accusation, all the shun, shun, shun. 
that is making you, holding you back from pursuing success. It's your time to shed those. And then you wear a new skin. Success. Know your father. Know what he's giving you. Know what is yours. And don't let anybody run you into the ditch of life. Nobody. Right? Nobody. <laughs> Whoever that person is, you have to dethrone some people. Gideon had to bring down father's idols, the things that made him afraid, the voices he used to listen to. If they are the one programming you, making you afraid, they've told you you are small, they are big. Listen, you have to tear them down. You have to dethrone some authority figures in your life. When you were five, the people that were telling you, do this, do this, do this, they still want, their voices are still programmed. You want to do this, you're afraid. What would they think? You want to do that, what would they think? You are doing this, their judgment assertions, they are programmed into your memory. The people who lashed you with their voices or whatever, when you were young, today you're still afraid of them. You've not done this work. Emotional maturity is saying, you know what? From now on forward, I'm accountable. I'm responsible for what's going on in me. I need my own mind to do what God wants me to do. You've been borrowing your mind. They've been manifesting their own thoughts in your life. You've become who they wanted you to become. And God is saying, that's not, that's not it. That's not it. What they wanted you to become, you became it to make them happy. What about you? Are you happy? This is deep. Ikechuku says it was great presentation on the spiritual and metaphysical aspects of tuning in with, in with one's real mission. It was not too much. Good, good, good. Quantum leap, absolutely. Quantum leap. You've experienced a little bit of this, just this session. Is that in the moment, you don't need one year of consumption of content that buries dreams. You don't need it to quantum leap. Quantum leap is at the edge of creation. It's at the metaphysical level where thoughts become matter. You can create a new reality, a new reality, a new feeling, a new emotion, a new identity, a new belief system. Now, 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 all things are possible to them that believe. How is salvation given? Salvation is given by believing and by confessing. Quantum leap happens when you awaken to what you ought to be believing and you start confessing. The creator of manifestation method, I break it down in my school. What happens between the spirit, heart, body, right, mind, body? Quantum leap can happen. This is what happens when Jesus has a conversation and says, are you ready to be whole? Yes. Carry your mat. Go. Healing, deliverance, miracles is quantum leap. Somebody that has crawled around for 40 years, 38 years, he encountered Jesus. It's all a message. It's a word, a new thought, a new programming of your mind can give you healing, deliverance, freedom, like that. What are you searching for? This content, this content, content creator, consuming, consuming, cons no, that's not quantum leap. It's like, listen, it buries people. Everybody should be winning right now if social media was designed to help you quantum leap. No, quantum leap is sitting with God. Hearing what he's telling you, the stories of your future. Your mind knows your past and is using it to create your present. If you want your tomorrow to be different than today, quantum leap. Because of this session, when you wake up tomorrow, is a different version of you that will wake up. Guaranteed. That's quantum leap. Radical transformation. It's not addition. It's not subtraction. You know, addition, you can be going and consuming content and they are adding on to you. You are adding on to your database. No, 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 no. Quantum leap is find the viruses, find the thoughts, delete them. You will start functioning differently. Your computer will function better the moment you remove the viruses. You can be down, you can be downloading all kinds of things on the computer. If the virus is still there, it's still robbing you of destiny. You can be downloading this app, downloading this app. You know what it does? It slows down the computer more <laughs> because the virus is still there. Many people are masking by consumption. I call it content addiction. You can be installing more things, more things. You think it's, you think the computer will perform better. You are being tricked to think more of this, more of this. No, 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 no. You don't need a year for God to touch your life. God sent his word and he healed our disease. Emotional healing will bring about physical well-being, physical. You, it will, when you heal emotionally your body, you will feel it in your body. So quantum leap is always available moment 
by moment. The moment you experience God in your life, your life will be transformed. That's your moment of jumping up out of depression, out of limitation. When you encounter God, God doesn't need a year to change your life. He doesn't. Sorry, he doesn't. Quantum leap is when you give God your mind. This book of the law shall not depart out of, right out of your mouth. You will meditate on it day and night. Listen, start doing that. Your life will change. It's, but if you keep tuning your mind, thinking this person will take you to success, that person will take... Listen, my content points you back to you because I know you carry destiny. You carry greatness. It just needs to be nurtured and given room to expand. Many of these thoughts, they are choking your power, choking you, choking you. I'm saying... You have to prune. The plant has to be pruned, right? The plant has to be pruned. Jesus will say, I'll prune you and you'll bear more fruits. That's a quantum leap. People are looking for next level result. I'm saying pruning, getting rid of negativity will help you manifest better results. People don't understand. When we get rid of the nonsense thinking, nonsense behavior, nonsense emotion, nonsense relationship, nonsense, like, that when I say nonsense, makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense for those things to still be hanging on to you, right? Your body, your physical body, the digestive system knows how to recognize nonsense. You eat this food, eat this food, popcorn, everything. But trust me, that system that God has designed, it knows nonsense and it knows where to direct nonsense. Part of this skill is where are we sending the nonsense in our lives? The negativity. We have to poop it out. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm using this word you know, you will never forget the image. <laughs> you, you Listen, we need to train our mind to give us what we want out of life. So thank you, everyone. For those who are able to undo this kind of um, challenging conversation, it's very confrontational. It's very jarring. Uh, but we need it. We need it. And then reach out, let me know. I invest this type of time because I know I don't, this is not content content. I don't want to come out here. I'm just because, you know, you know, just, just contributing to the noise, you know, more content, more content, more content, more content. No, 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 no. If I'm going to be here, if I'm going to invest my own energy, if I'm going to support people, if I'm then you will change. <laughs> you will be transformed. You will change. And my school has deeper, 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 deeper transformation. And the quantum leap experience, right? Come to Tony University Academy, enroll in my programs. And that, that's the work. That's the assignment we have now. Life-changing. Because in the moment, you, again, you don't, need, you don't need a year. You don't need 10 years. The quantum leap is when you transform and you have direction, guidance, coaching, mentorship, and you are able to hold yourself accountable, you can commit, you can focus, your future will arrive sooner than if you're not doing this work. Okay? The future arrives sooner when you take massive action in the direction of your future. But if you are crawling, you know, or somebody else is dragging you, that's one of the, the reason I also teach this way is I'm not ready to carry and I'm not ready to drag anybody. You can't drag anybody up these, right? Up success. But, but this type of program, you need your own energy for your own pursuit. Many people want other people to spend their energy on them, right? It's like the man, okay, whose friends dropped him from the roof to encounter Jesus. The guy, the way he came in is not the way he came out. <laughs> Your friends can drag and give you this content. Your friends can say, yeah, it's help. I think Jesus can help you. The friends can offer you as much help as they think they can offer. Trust me, good friends will push you towards help. But when you encounter help, you will carry your, now you have to do what? Carry your cross and follow me. Jesus will say, carry your cross, follow me. That's the same principle. I have a book in my school, Marketing for Christians, 14 Principles from Jesus' Journey. Listen, you will see scriptures there. I practice exactly what he does. Jesus didn't carry anything for anybody. He will speak your own faith, 
Your own energy has to mix with the word of God. The word of God is everywhere. It's in your Bible. If you read it, but you don't mix it with faith, with belief, it does nothing. It falls flat. So if God gives you an idea for your business, and that idea is just here, the way you capture the idea is to say, I want it, I believe it, but you have to understand that the creator method helps you. On There's a self that has to believe, you have to see, and you have to move your mind into that realm of belief. But if your mind is living in the realm of doubt, of limitation, it's vibrating as a low frequency and it's manifesting exactly your belief. When you want to vibrate, we want to manifest at higher levels of success, your mind has to travel there first because your body cannot go where your mind hasn't gone. So your mind has to travel. Your energy has to go with it. It has to manifest in the mind. Your emotions will change, you know, because the moment you start believing, dreaming about a future, you'll be excited. Your body will be like, I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The energy to pursue, right? The desire. To, but when desire is not active, the body will be like, ah, screeching. But you can manufacture those chemicals already in your body just by thinking differently. The power of imagination. The moment you can Im imagine, see, old what God has for you, healing. God says you are healed, you believe it. Quantum leap. God says you are wealthy, you believe it. God says you are whole, you believe it. Quantum leap. Quantum leap. The quantum leap is at the edge of believing. This is where thoughts create matter. Metaphysical. By the edge of creation. How the whole world was created with the word of God. That's the quantum leap. Is that in a moment, you can change your reality by speaking, professing truth over your own life. But if you keep speaking lies, oh, is this, is, you, are, you are creating reality just with your words and your thoughts. So this is deep. So I thank you, everyone. Again, this is not content. Con listen, this content, please, you're gonna, I need you to share it. Everybody you love, share this. This, is, this has to go around the world it has to go around 100 <laughs> percent the wise says 100 right go ahead and speak you you agree with me right okay he's putting he's, he's doing uh emoji are you able to speak on mute i can see all your art shapes love <laughs> believe 100 yeah. percent yes yeah yeah so i can i can definitely speak for a moment uh then i have to just go back into mm -hmm. this in mode um but what I want to say, absolutely, for me, I, I think the signature of this talk was faith without work is dead. Um, and I will continue to keep coming back to these rooms. Sometimes I feel that I cannot get enough. Um, and, and as you know, the digital jungle, which is my humble home and virtual habitat, is vast, right? There's all of these platforms, so much landscape. Um, but I, I find my heart and my mind uh, making a conscious choice to be called to to these segments i wouldn't miss it for the world <laughs> uh, so thank you once again for you i have checked out the um, your academy and i will continue to read through the website etc i will also continue to come back here and if there's any way on or offline that i can help contribute or complement not only your journey but empowering others through you then please i'm here for it um i'm created on shore you can check out my stuff, but if there's any way that I can give back to your powerful, uh, um, your word, then then just tap in. I'm here for any time. Right. Okay? And, yeah, and I appreciate that. I know there's there's one of my friends that just one of the things she said because she's taking part of my classes, and she said, "Toin, you have to multiply yourself. This is too good. This is not." So, she said. There was a time she said this she, i mean so when people experience this is not this is even just the public stuff like I, i've not showed you any powerpoints right i've not I, right um so how much more if you dive into the powerpoints the lessons the programs the workbooks and the worksheets as well and you actually have the tools to do that work and so she she was like doing like how do we this did what she's experiencing she's like oh why why did nobody tell us why did nobody but i say revelation right the, the 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 time the seasons god ordained a time like this so he's, he's revealing new things because he has new things for us because i tell you the school everything i've designed i always tell, tell god who like the people you plan this for right the people that god planned this for this is the quantum leap when i talk about quantum leap is that i know by the spirit of god that there is radical change 
that God has prepared for specific people, right? If God has prepared me to be this coach, to develop school system programs that changes lives radically, it means that God himself is moving a generation of, of people from Egypt into a promised land. Millions of people, okay, need to hear this, will hear this, and their lives will be changed forever. This is a generational movement that God is creating. So we have to wake up. Yes, you want to say something? Yeah, just very briefly, Twin, I believe it's something that you just said, and I always kind of come back to this, it triggered me. You know, God doesn't call the equipped, God equips the called, and part of, part of equipping the called, okay, is number one, the called being opened to that ordained necessary, if that's even a word. Um, people pray, they ask, they want to believe, but they sometimes fail to or find it challenging to position themselves to, re to receive that equipment, right? Um, and so I think that in between the person wanting better for themselves and rising to that, that mission or that assignment, and in between them being fully equipped uh, and starting, beginning to master that, I think there has to be a huge bridge of people, educators, and empowerers, mentors like yourself to take them from A to Z, mm. right? So for me, that's what it means mm. to be number one. At number one, you know the saying, right? When the student is ready, mm. the master will appear, okay? So the master is not the end product. The master is there to take the master's good stuff, pour it into the student, and then wish that the student is going to be better than themselves mm. to empower others in the, in the general missions mm. to come. So we must understand that it's, it's, we're present, we're conscious, but it's way beyond. Our mission is even way beyond mm. uh, even after we transition, right? Mm. Our name is, it is, keeps on getting said every time someone mm. remembers us or learns from our teachings. So that's, mm. to me, that's what you do, right? You're that, you're that, that bridge, that backbone and that deliverer um, to empower those that are, mm. are, are called when they're ready to be equipped and only when they're ready to be equipped. Right. There's nothing that you, me or anyone else can do if it's premature on their journey. So mm. that I've got much respect for, much love for and much wisdom to you. Wow. the wise tiger. And those are my ways of words. Thank you. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. <laughs> That's deep. I, I, I'm sitting with that for sure. You know, because I believe people have their race to run. And just like in a, in a race, in the race of life, like literally when cars are racing, I see my programs and my coaching resources as, you know, when, when your, tower, your tire wears out, when your engine needs to be tuned, when you need oil change, when you need renewal, because you're going to need it. Because this is not a overnight, there's no overnight success. It's a life journey, right? No matter what people are selling you out there. Oh, yeah, look here, look here, look here, right? No, 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 no. I'm telling you the truth. If you will listen to me is that we, we get tired. We, you know, people, it's easy to lose hope. You need courage. And you also need the skills of renewal. So when I say self-therapy, the way I teach it and the things I talk about, self-regulation, reparenting, is that when you are, when you lose courage, when you are tired, when you need encouragement, when you need motivation, when nobody is telling you you can do it, when nobody believes you, you have to believe in yourself. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Part of this skill is that you have to rely on God's word. You have to believe on God's word. But there's a different skill other than oh, going to church, sitting down. You know, the, the, the preacher has digested what he would digest it, and he's just feeding you crumbs from his own digest. So people go into church, they come out. They go into church, they come out. Nothing, no changes, no transformation, no healing, no deliverance, no transfer, no wealth, nothing. Everybody's just repeating, repeating, repeating circle. Why? Why? Listen, the word of God is powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. <laughs> it's so powerful. Quantum leap. You're like, you will blink like this. You will, you will change. We will change. But if you don't tune yourself to the place where renewal is, 
And if you don't open up yourself, like you were saying, because God even says, if my people will humble, the, there's humility. Pride is a destroyer. Goes before a fall. Oh, I'm, I'm this, I'm this. Okay, keep moving. If my people who are called by my name will humble, you cannot be a, if you, if you're not a student of life, you can, if you cannot be my student, you can't listen to me. You know, some people bring in an energy. Who does she think she is? Why is she talking that way? Our word is so, dis listen, keep moving. Listen, because Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice and they obey. Anybody that cannot obey, that cannot listen, that cannot do what God is telling them, you've already eliminated yourself from being shepherd, the good shepherd. This good shepherd can smack you on the side and say, no, 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 you're not going this way. Turn, turn. And if that sheep rebel, the spirit of rebellion, you eliminate, you remove yourself. He who breaks the edge, the serpent bites. When you eliminate yourself from the shepherd of Jesus Christ and you go to the other side and let other people be shepherding you, you are going where they are going. God tells you about the, the wolves. He tells you about the serpent. Many people read Bible, but they, they are not past, they don't understand that. Everything in the Bible, you can see. When you, when you spiritually awaken, every single day, you will see scripture all over you. You will see what everything Jesus told us. You think it's ancient. No, 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 no. Right now, wolves in sheep's clothing, they are here on social media. You listen to them, they confuse you. Two days later, you don't know what happened to you. Yes, the energy they attach to you, the thoughts they gave you, hijack your energy, give depression. You are seeing people doing this, they have to paint, they have to do it, they give you depression. You are watching somebody else demonstrate something just by you, your high gates, looking at the life they presented to you, the spirit behind it you don't know. They give you thoughts of hopelessness. Now you are sitting in your house. Oh, are we, are we, are we? they've hijacked your energy and that energy plus thoughts is doing damage on and on you know <laughs> on and on many th there are many things i want to tell you but most of the time right they are more spiritual <laughs> than business <laughs> right so in the church i have some videos on preaching i did in the church like in the church i will use real scripture to demonstrate to you what you have to be aware of. Don't, you cannot be ignorant of the devices, right? Jesus told us the ignorance of the devices of the devil. You cannot be ignorant. There are devices today hijacking mind because as long as your mind is giving you unbelief, doubt, fear, whatever those things are, that mind is not tuned to the word of God. It has been hijacked by the thoughts in the hair. You see, there are thoughts, just like this cell phone, your phone picks up signals. Your mind is magnetic. It picks up signal. When you enter a room, no matter what, if everybody's smiling at you, your mind will still pick out. The sixth sense will pick out signals. It, it can read signals. Listen, that you, are an elect, you have electric circuits in your system that can pick up on other people's electric charge. When you see somebody, you can feel hunger. You know that. Even if your eyes are closed, if, if somebody that is angry comes close to you, you will know. You will know your mind picks up on signals. So you have to be more discerning, scrolling through social media. It's not everybody you should be following. It's not every message you, right? Listen to your, when you do this work, your mind will tell you, shut it off. Don't listen. Even if it looks good, listen to your heart. It knows more than you. It is more intelligent than your senses. It will tell you, don't go there. Don't do this. But imagine if your mind says, don't eat this food. There's, but you don't know. That the food being poisoned, you know, Proverbs says, people who put food in your, in your front, eat, eat, eat. He said, but their heart is not with you. People who give you content, but they want to entrap you. They want you, they want to use your energy to grow like this, 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 do this. You are doing, you are investing your energy to help them grow, but they are not growing, growing you. Every time you hear them, ah, I like you, I like you. They're saying thank you. You are giving your energy to grow them. But what are they giving you back? These things, your heart will tell you, don't follow this. But when the heart, right? When, when the, because the mind will can then hijack the heart and be telling the heart, you can't do this, you can't do that. But the mind is supposed to educate the heart. Uh, the heart is supposed to educate the mind. But if you don't do this work, right? Because your heart is supposed to be giving instructions to your mind. 
and your mind is supposed to obey, that's discipline, self-discipline. You say you want to lose weight. Your mind doesn't want to be put under pressure. But if you are disciplined, your heart is supposed to bring your mind along. But when people haven't done this work, if your mind is more stronger than your heart, the mind that is programmed will tell you everything you cannot be. So as God is trying to plant new progress in your heart, your mind will tell you, no, don't listen. Don't give time. Ah, you don't have money. So you can't do this. You don't have time. So you can't do this. So you know, people don't prioritize destiny because their mind is afraid of the, of the future, is afraid of the past. Yes, even images of the past can be traumatizing for people. What happened to you, you've not reconciled. So this is so deep. But I want to wrap up. This is, listen, I've gone over because I've gone deep, 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 deep. The work that is now left is for you to grab my resources and do your own work. You understand? You need to do this work. Gain emotional freedom. You will set yourself free. Thank you so much. B Nikki, I see you. She's taking the class. Ah, B Nikki has testimonies, but she's on Instagram. Listen, one day you need to come and tell them what the class is. <laughs> Some of them, they listen to the classes over and over and over again. I hear from people who, while they are jogging, they are listening. You know, some people say jogging companion. Some people would say, okay, I'm in the kitchen, I'm cooking, I'm listening, I'm driving. I have so many stories to share, but you guys need to come and share your stories with other people as well. So thank you, everyone. I consider it a great honor. Guys, I do not take, nobody draws this honor unto himself to be of service to God's people, to, to be relevant to my generation, to be a vessel to deliver this message, this message of healing, deliverance, really, literally right? Rescuing your mind so that you can use it to manifest a greater future for yourself and your, and, your, and your children. I do not take it for granted at all. It comes with great responsibility and humility as well. So I'm honored. If you want me to be your coach, join, join my school. And um, if you have questions, reach out as well. So thank you, everybody. Uh, it's time to run. I care deeply. Listen, I care so deeply. And I'm also saying, please care deeply. Old pressures, your own heart. Don't, don't give it away. <laughs> when you give your heart, you're giving your energy, your life force away. Guard your heart, renew your mind. Your heart is going to give birth to your future. Your heart knows your future. Your mind knows your past. Your mind uses whatever you feed it to create your present. Right now, your mind is using past stories to create current realities. When you want your mind to manifest what is in your heart, your heart has to reprogram your mind. And it takes a lot of discipline, inner wrestle. Your faith has to conquer your fears. You have to remove all the thoughts of limitations, those voices. Sometimes you can do it by yourself. Sometimes when people go for therapy, all of those things, right, is that the thoughts inside you, you've got to see it. And the ones that are not for you, you've got to remove it. Because most of the places, you have to start asking, who told you so? Where did this thought come from? You need to start combing the thoughts in your mind and say, no, I don't agree. Delete. No, who told No, 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 I'm not afraid. Delete. No, 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 I'm not doubting. No, no, no. I'm confident in what God has said about me. I'm confident in the name he calls me. I'm confident in his assignment for me. I'm confident in the abilities he has endowed me with. And because of that, I can serve the world. I can serve you. I can serve the world because I'm confident that this work is important. This work is transformational. This work is healing. This work gives you more power, right? To manifest success in your life. So I just say, do the same for yourself. You don't need to doubt anything. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt God. No. Cut your relationship with doubt. Say today, you are, you are not a doubter. You are not a procrastinator. You are not a lazy person. You have to break all those labels that people now say, oh, imposters. You, no, 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 no. Don't let these things rob your identity. In the class, I tell you how you have to create a different story. I tell you how, how your mind creates stories. It uses your past to create stories and images of the future. And when that future is, is not the one you want, you will, you'll be angry, you will be afraid. When your mind... Put in front of you a future that is scary. You watch horror movie. Do you know your mind also uses the movies you watch that you are laughing to, the music you are hearing? It uses it as the information to build an image in your head. Yes. The movies you are laughing to, you are feeding your mind that I like what I'm watching. And so your mind in the subconscious will cook reality. So if those stories are oral movies, 
if those stories are this, 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 the mind doesn't care. You gave it to your mind. You opened your eyes, you opened your ear gates, and you watched it. And so your mind takes all your thoughts as instruction. It doesn't care. It will ju just like in your food, you can eat anything, eat popcorn, eat chocolate. Eat your mouth is not designed to be resisting you. It obeys you. Your mind obeys you. All those movies, they're in your system. When you're not sleeping at night, <laughs> it will now be projecting what's inside you. Listen, your mind cannot project what is not inside you. Learn this lesson. Your mind cannot bring you images that is not inside you. It's a clue that some thoughts, consciously or subconsciously, has entered your system and is about to manifest. I'm going more deeply spiritual. When you see images and dreams that it doesn't look like what you want, part of this power is you can override it. But if you don't know how to override it, that is where right, fear comes in. That's where fear comes in. You don't feel you have the power. You don't know the power you have to resist any thoughts of open. You know, Bible says, tear down. You know, you can't read it again. Go and read the Bible again. You didn't hear Bible says refute, right? There are some action words in Bible that say you are responsible for tearing down, pulling opposition, refuting. That's the weapon. You will cancel and delete images of failure. Whatever doubt is, anything that says you don't have, it's looking at physical realm, not spiritual realm. Spiritual realm, there's unlimited stuff. You can come up with anything now. All things are possible to them that believe. Simply by believing it, you can make anything happen in reality. That's another advanced stuff. So let me wrap up, guys. This has been a pleasure. More, more, more. See, listen, I'm just putting out more, but listen, more. Ready to do the work? Join us at 